Good morning. I want to read to you today from John chapter 7, verse 5. For neither did his brethren believe in him. That is an amazing statement. For neither did his brethren believe in him. Then Jesus said unto them, My time is not yet come, but your time is always ready. Jesus has a discussion with his brothers. Um, one of those brothers was named James. You will read his book here in the New Testament. He was the head of the church, the leader of the New Testament church. You'll also read about his brother Jude, who wrote the book of book the book of Jude next to before Revelation. Jesus had five brothers, and um, they did not believe in him. When I read this story to you, they have just made a suggestion to him. And his brethren therefore said unto him, Depart hence, and um, go into Jerusalem, that thy disciples may also see the works that thou hast done. For there is no man that doeth anything in secret, and he himself seeketh to, seeketh to be known openly. If thou do these things, show thyself to the world. For neither did his brothers believe in him. You know, it's tough when you lack family support. If you read Luke, I think it's chapter 8, you'll find that his mother and his brothers were without. They were asking for him. They could not get to him for the press of the crowd. I want you to understand his brothers didn't understand now, Mary kept a lot of things and pondered on them and watched God fulfill his word concerning Messiah in Jesus' life. I'm sure his brother has seen, brethren have seen some miracles. They've seen some mighty things. In fact, they said, go on up to Jerusalem, the center of religion, and show them your mighty works. But I want to tell you, Jesus was not P.T. Barnum. He was not a showman. He was not an entertainer. Jesus is the Son of God. He doesn't perform for your entertainment. He doesn't respond just to hear men's opinions. And the Bible says that Jesus tarried there while they went on up to the feast. Sometimes you have had to walk alone. There have been times when you've tried to share your faith with someone that is in your family or someone that you respected or admired, and there was no response. There was no, there was no sincere appreciation. I want to tell you, Jesus had to deal with the unbelief of his own brothers. Jesus said it, said it there's no prophet that is without honor except in his own hometown. Sometimes right where you live, right at your doorstep, right in your living room, right in your kitchen, may be your toughest moments of testimony. You know that Jesus went to his own hometown. Do you know what they said of him there? That he could do no mighty miracles there because of their unbelief. I do believe, appreciate, and thank God for your concern and your compassion for your family. I do believe you in earnestly, sincerely, deeply pray for them faithfully. But there hasn't been that hope for response. Well, I'm going to tell you that none of Jesus' brothers followed him in faith till after the resurrection. In fact, he had a personal appearance to his brother James. And not only that, but the Bible lists those in the upper room, his brethren were there. There had been a transformation in their life and Mary was there with them. Hold your faith. Don't give up on your family. Don't stop praying. Believe. Sometimes, sometimes the one you love the most, the one you care about the most, 
seems to be the most difficult to affect. But I want to tell you, dear wife, if you have an unbelieving husband, you may win him. The, scripture, the scriptures do speak to that end. Dear wife, keep your faith. Dear mother, dear father, dear brother, dear sister that are praying for your families, keep your faith. Stand in that gap of belief and God is going to move for you. Do you remember the fifth Philippian jailer? I doubt if he had any intentions of being saved or even being religious or even attending a church service. But there was a prayer meeting in his jail and the jailhouse shook. And the keeper of the prisoner cried out and God heard his cry. You know, your loved one is coming to that place where they're going to ask you for help. When they do, you speak with love. You speak with kindness. You speak with mercy. You are the voice God's going to use. You are the person who they will come to. Stay faithful. Stay faithful. I want to pray with you for your loved one this morning. I know many times you have been disappointed or shed tears or made promises and they never seem to come to pass. Well, we're going to believe today that God will change that. Father, I pray for that father, Lord, who is waiting for his son to return from that far country. He waits with faith. He waits with diligence. I pray for that mother, God, who daily with earnestness sheds tears that you put in a bottle for her loved one. I pray for that son or daughter. I pray for that family member in the name of Jesus. I pray, Lord, that you will send a witness to him, that you will send a, a faithful servant to him. I pray, Lord, that the harvest is white and you will send a harvester, a laborer to him to draw them in in the precious and loving name of Jesus. I have a friend who prayed for 35 years for their loved ones. 35 years. But she was faithful and God was faithful and she won that loved one to the Lord. Do not despair. He's coming and you're going to have a word of testimony. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus for each person today. I pray for their families. I pray for those who have have deep concerns and daily prayers, even with fastings for their children. I thank you, God, for a spirit of revival to revive our nation and to revive our families. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to thank you today, and uh, I want to encourage you each morning at 11 o'clock to join us. Join us in prayer. Pray before and pray afterwards. And I want to thank you for your faithfulness in giving. God bless you is our prayer.